Today we have with us here on the Livin' La Vida Low Carb Show, a very special edition of the show. We have Detlef Boysen. He is from Legacy Health, the Director of Basic and Transla- Translational Research. He's also the Interim Dow Chair of the Department of Neurology and the Director of the Neurobiology Research there. And the reason I wanted to have him on, uh, because there was a huge research uh, project that came out uh, that he was a part of, where they examined what was going on when people go on a ketogenic, high-fat, low-carb diet for controlling epilepsy. And you know I've had many people on this podcast before who have talked about it, uh, people like Dr. Eric Kossoff, who say, you know what, we just know that it works. We don't know why it works. We just know that it works. Detlef wanted to examine precisely why it works, and they've identified in mice the molecular mechanism that is responsible for the anti-epileptic effects of the ketogenic diet. So welcome to the show, Detlef. I'm glad to be here. Well, tell us a little more about your research because your team found a a rather interesting expression of a certain protein that might be the missing element of why the ketogenic diet works so well for people with epilepsy. Yeah, my main interest in in epilepsy is completely different to what the pharmaceutical industry is basically doing. So epilepsy is a very complex uh, disorder where uh, homeostatic functions of an entire brain network uh, get dysregulated. Right. So this means you, you cannot cure epilepsy by targeting a particular defined pathway. You need to find ways to reconstruct a network function. And this is exactly what, what a diet can do because the ketogenic diet has probably many different ways to, to affect a brain homeostasis and in parallel, we have been studying one of the brain's endogenous uh, anti-epileptic molecules, which is called adenosine. And adenosine is uh, most likely an, an upstream regulator of brain homeostasis. Uh, adenosine was already present very early in evolution, which means it, it was uh, already there from the beginning of life. Um, so this means that adenosine has li- likely evolved uh, into a master regulator that can affect complex network uh, dysfunction. So our research has basically shown that adenosine deficiency is a pathological hallmark of the epileptic brain, and therefore that adenosine augmentation therapies can very effectively prevent epileptic seizures. So we have we have done this in, in, in many different studies where we treated epileptic mice and rats with local brain implants that release adenosine. Due to the fact that a ketogenic diet can is directly linked to homeostatic functions of the brain, we, we hypothesize that uh, the ketogenic diet might influence uh, adenosine signaling in the brain. And how can we prove this? We made use of uh, transgenic mice that we have in our laboratory. And, and these mice have uh, epileptic seizures either based on deficiency of adenosine. Those are mice that overexpress the adenosine-removing enzyme adenosine kinase, Mm -hmm. or mice that have seizures because they lack the receptor that mediates the effect of adenosine, which is the adenosine A1 receptor. So then we fed those mice with the the ketogenic diet, and the ketogenic diet was uh, able to almost completely prevent epileptic seizures in mice with the adenosine deficiency, but the, the diet was completely ineffective in mice which less, which lack the receptor. Hmm. And, and this study provided uh, conclusive evidence that the ketogenic diet prevents epileptic seizures in, in those animals by uh, augmenting adenosine signaling in brain. What did you actually feed the, the mice um, and what percentage of the macronutrients uh, did, did the diet make up? Yeah, so this is a diet that contains uh, 8% protein. Mm -hmm. So that's a commercial uh, diet that is formulated for rodents. Gotcha. So it's uh, 8% protein. How much carbohydrate? 5%? No, it's uh, it's less. It's even less than 5. So then the rest would all be fat. Yeah, it's it's a very fatty diet. It's it's almost a greasy uh, soup. (laughs) <laughs> and they eat it and they eat it willingly. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. Yeah. Wow. They, they get kind of greasy but but they 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 do well with the diet. 
Well, and it mimics the diet that the humans uh, who have epilepsy would have to eat to control their seizures. Now, um, I know you did this on mice, but is there any research that might be forthcoming as a result of this that would be done on humans that would test to see if this is applicable to the human population? We have evidence from human brain samples that the adenosine-removing adenosine kinase is overexpressed in tissue resected from patients with pharmacoresistant temporal lobe epilepsy. So this indicates that uh, human epilepsy is also associated with a deficiency of adenosine. So our research might provide initiatives to start with the ketogenic diet much earlier for the treatment of epilepsy. So right. currently the diet is used as a last resort. So if dozens of anti-epileptic drugs have failed, those patients go onto a ketogenic diet. It might be worthwhile to start a ketogenic diet much earlier or perhaps in lieu of uh, anti-epileptic drugs, but no clinical trials have ever been done uh, to do this. So Detlev, why isn't the ketogenic diet more accepted as a, as a popular treatment option? I, I know when I spoke with uh, various people before, people like Dr. Eric Kossoff, you know, they said very, very small percentage of people with epilepsy are actually using the ketogenic diet. It would seem to me, being a more natural remedy, <laughs> that people yeah, are actually absolutely. finding good results from, even better results than some of the most popular and most effective, quote-unquote effective, um, pharmaceuticals, that they would want to try a very high-fat, very low-carbohydrate ketogenic diet. Yeah, I think the major hindrance is our commercial in interest from the pharmaceutical industry. So they can make more, yeah, they, they simply can make more money if they uh, design new drugs right? To, to stop the symptoms, but not to cure the disease. Do you think the fear of fat is also a role in this? I don't think so. Studies have shown that after onset of the ketogenic diet, cholesterol levels, for instance, briefly spike, right? but they normalize eventually. Right. And patients on a ketogenic diet may eventually lose weight. Right. So a ketogenic diet can be quite palatable. So it could be an uh, avocado salad with olive oil and walnuts. Mm -hmm. And yet it's unfortunate because a lot of people, if you ask just the average Joe on the street, Detlev, uh, is, is fat healthy? I would bet 9 out of 10 people would tell you, nope, <laughs> you don't need yeah, fat in your right. diet because we've been so culturalized to fear fat that when you talk about a high fat ketogenic diet a la for epilepsy, you know, a lot of people see a 90% fat diet and their eyes bug out because they're like, oh my gosh, you're going to clog your arteries, you're going to have a heart attack. Even if you control your epilepsy, you're going to have a heart attack because you're clogging your arteries. There's just so much misinformation out there about a high fat diet. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, his name is Detlef Boysen, and his research is actually published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, and that was on June the 23rd, 2011, so check it out. A ketogenic diet suppresses seizures in mice through adenosine A1 receptors, and we'll have a link to that for you so that you can uh, check that out. And thanks so much for joining us here today on the Live and La Vida Low Carb Show. Visit our website at theliveandlowcarbshow.com slash show notes. And email us anytime at llvlcshow at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.